Well done, good morning and happy Sabbath to all. I am going to say the prayer to begin Sabbath school to Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you for sparing our lives to see another day and another Sabbath. And we thank you for another opportunity to make it right with you. And we pray that you will help us to not break the Sabbath and keep it holy. And we ask that you will be with those who are bringing forward these things to us and help us to take it in and understand. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Good morning boys and girls and welcome to Sabbath School today. This morning we're going to give God praise and thanks for all that he has done for us. And we're going to start with hymn number 539, I Will Early Seek the Savior. Mm -hmm. makes us happy. Hymn number 579. Stand up and tell me if you love my Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Savage School, especially to the beginners and the kindergarten children. Today, we are going to do a lesson that reminds us that Jesus was a child just like us. Do you know that we often think about Jesus as a baby in a manger, but we don't remember that he grew up and probably had a toy just like us. See my toy here, my big teddy bear, just like you are. He probably played ball, catch, just like you did or you are doing. He held his mommy's hand when he was walking and he probably sat up and listened to the story. Jesus can identify with us because he was just like we are and he was just like you are. This week's lesson is entitled, Daddy's Helper. Our memory verse is taken from Proverbs 20, 11. Even a child is known by his actions. Even a child is known by his actions. What are some of the new things you are learning? Are you learning to wash wears? Are you learning to fold your clothes? Are you learning to pack away your drawers? Are you learning to dust the dusty chairs? Jesus, as a child, was learning new things every day. Jesus' father worked in a carpenter's shop. His shop was probably very near to his home. Who is a carpenter? A carpenter is someone who builds things made from wood. First, he will have to cut the trees down with his trusty little axe. He will cut the trees down. Then, he will saw the wood. Use a saw. These are some of his tools. To saw the wood and make boards. And he will also use a hammer to nail things together. What will a carpenter make? A carpenter will make wooden chairs like these. He can make wooden rails for people's houses. And he can also make doors. And here we have a carpenter busy painting his door. So a carpenter is very helpful. He's very useful to us. Jesus helped his father in the carpenter's shop. He helped him paint the wood. He helped him saw the wood. And he did a very nice job. I could imagine all the folks around the love the work that Jesus do, that Jesus did. What about you? When you are doing your work, when you are dusting the chairs for mommy, when you are cleaning up the home, when you are packing up your clothes, do you do a good job? Jesus wants you to do your best work. It may not be a perfect work, but it will be a, your best work. If you are doing your school work, you do your very best. Everything that you do, you must put your best effort. Boys and girls, our message today is we serve God when we do our best work. Jesus is not happy when we, when we do things sloppy. When we do things in a hurry and we run away and we try to get away from doing things. He wants us to be happy helpers, just as he was a happy helper in the school. Have a nice Sabbath and see you next week. Remember, be a good helper. Good morning, boys and girls. Our lesson today is entitled, A Long, Long Walk.
and our memory verse is taken from Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 and it reads then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us and I said here am I sent me the message is I will listen when God calls me to serve him in this lesson God speaks to Abraham and tells him to leave his home and earth and move to a place where the Lord will lead him. So let's see where God takes him. Abram loved God. He talked with him many times each day. He wanted to do whatever God said. One day, God spoke to Abram. It's time for you to leave Ur, Abram. You must leave all your friends and go to a place that I will show you. Abraham must have been speechless. Why would God send, want him to leave his home and go someplace else to live? God continued, I will bless you, Abraham. I will give you children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Your family will grow into a mighty nation. You will be greatly blessed. Now, that must have really made Abraham wonder. For he and his wife, Sarai, did not have even one child. Nevertheless, Abraham and Sarai chose to obey God. They packed up all their belongings. Abraham's servants folded and packed all the tents. The time had come to leave. Abraham called together all those who would go with them. Lot, Abraham's nephew, joined the group. All the people who worked in Abraham's house and the people whom Abraham had taught to worship God also got ready to go. They loaded their donkeys and their camels and began their long journey. Abraham, Sarai, their family members and their servants walked the dusty road day after day. The sun was very hot. But through it all, God provided for them. Finally, the caravan reached the land of Canaan. But still, Abram and Sarai, their people, their donkeys and their camels traveled on. When would they stop? Where was God leading them? In Shasham, a place where many Canaanites lived, there was a forest of trees called the Great Trees of Moreh. When Abraham reached the forest of Moreh, he called to his servants, Halt! Set up camp here! As the servants prepared the camp, God appeared and spoke to Abraham. Look around you, Abraham, God said. This is the land that I am going to give you and your family. Abram looked around. He saw a wide, grassy valley with rolling hills. He saw olive trees, fig trees, and springs of cool water everywhere. But Abram also saw something that made him very sad. Among the trees, he saw altars that were used to worship idols. Abraham immediately gathered stones to build an altar. He wanted to worship God and thank him for being with them during their journey. He wanted to tell God that he was willing to go anywhere God wanted. He was willing to do whatever God asked him to do. So boys and girls, we need to be willing to listen to God just as Abraham was. God spoke words directly to Abraham. Today, he may speak to us directly too, through his word, the Bible, or through our parents, a family member, or even a friend. And you know what? When we are willing, God lets us know what he wants. He gives us understanding and he helps us know in our hearts what he wants us to do. So let's repeat our message for this week. I will listen when God calls me to serve him. Pleasant Sabbath, juniors and all viewers. Today's lesson is what I believe all Christians should live by. 
being a blessing and being a blessing to others not just to yourself but being a blessing to others so the title of our junior lesson study is being a blessing when was the last time someone thanked you how did it feel oh yes really really good I am sure you were a blessing to others. Today's lesson, we are going to show you how Jesus was a blessing as a child and how you can be a blessing at your age. Do you know that being a blessing to others is one of the best ways to share Jesus? Oh yes, it is. Being a blessing to others is letting your light shine for before others so that when they see your good deeds, they will glorify your Father in heaven. So our text today is taken from Mark 10 verse 45. And hear what Mark 10 verse 45 says. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Juniors, did you know that Jesus was a child just like you? Yes, he was 10. Then he turned to 11. Then he became 12, just like your age group. From childhood, his one purpose in life was to bless others. He performed faithfully the duties of a son, of a brother, a friend, and a citizen. During his early years as a son to Joseph and Mary, he was obedient to his parents. Are you obedient to your parents? Jesus was known to his fellow tongue men as the carpenter of Nazareth. And you can find that in Mark 6 and verse 3. And the carpenter's son, Matthew 13, 55. Now let's brainstorm qualities that makes a good servant. Humble and meek. Mmm. You appreciate the value of people. You're not full of pride or anything. What's another quality do you think makes a good servant? Mm, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Love. Mm? And kindness. I heard. Love and kindness. So these are some examples of some qualities that makes a good servant or is in individuals who are a blessing to others. A servant gives of themselves to God and to others. They serve voluntarily, generously, and often anonymously. They don't allow others to know. Servants forgive others because God has given them and they make peace and build each other up. They are accepting, tolerant, and positive. They have a positive mindset. So let's look at or let's examine some ways Jesus served others when he was your age juniors. Let's think about some things that Jesus did. I want you to think. So I'm listening, I'm hearing you. Think about some of the things you think Jesus did. How did Jesus serve others at your age? Tell your mother. Mm -hmm. Tell daddy now. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Shariah is telling me one. Okay, Shariah, I will share it with others. She said that she knows that Jesus was helpful to his parents by doing chores in his home in Nazareth. 
So what are some chores do you do in your home? Or are you not doing any chores at all? Jesus also worked in the carpenter's shop. Yes, yes. Mm. I'm hearing some other examples that you think Jesus served. He was of service when he was your age. What do you think he did again? Ah, I'm hearing what Jada said. She said that he fed the poor and the homeless. Very good. Let me hear what Christopher is saying. He visited the seniors and even helped them with their duties. Oh, yes, that's right. And he even encouraged his friends with kind words. Yes, Shariah, I'm telling them what you said. So he said that they are special and wonderfully made. He's telling his friends that you're important. You can do it. So Jesus used encouraging words. So these are some examples that we think what Jesus did at your age in order to serve others. What are some ways you can be a blessing to others or a servant, especially during this pandemic? Let's think about some ways because our ultimate aim of ultimate goal as Christians is to be a blessing to others. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can do it. All right. Some of you are already a blessing by using your talents and skills to tell others about Jesus. If you just look at all the talents in our church, all the children who are singing, who are playing a musical instrument, you are being a blessing to others already. Just continue doing it. You can call granny or grandpa often to talk with them or even visit them to bring chair. I call my mother every day. If I don't call today, I will visit her tomorrow. And a good idea, you can also have a virtual game with grandpa. Yes, you can even have dinner virtually with grandpa organize something and said grandpa i'm going to prepare something and let's eat together that's been a blessing to a family member school has resumed this week yes i know and you know what your friend told you that she didn't do well last term. how can you be a blessing to help that friend you can have a virtual class explaining what he or she didn't understand last term. You can even pick them up in their spelling test that is going to be happening this Friday coming. You see how you can be a blessing? So these are just some ideas. You can also assist mommy and daddy dropping off food hampers to the to needy individuals. What about starting a friend, a pen pal friend? Now everything is electronically. So what you can do, you can send them an email or you can send them a WhatsApp message to a senior or to a young person. And you can also encourage someone positive words. You can send a text, you can send a memory verse, but you can send something positive. All of that is ways in which you as a young person, as a 10 year old, 11 or 12, even seven or eight, can be a blessing to others. You can come up with your own ideas of being a blessing to others, but I want you to share with, share it with mommy and daddy so that they can assist you in being a blessing. Like Jesus, our PowerPoint says, we can serve others selflessly. I'm going to repeat. We can serve, all of us can serve others selflessly. And as we close, I repeat the memory text. Let's go together. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 
Mark 10, 45. Let's go. Mark 10, 45. We close our lesson today and I hope that you gain the lesson so that from this week, you are going to be a blessing to someone in your home, in your community, or even online teaching. Be a blessing and I would see you guys next Sabbath. Have a great Sabbath. Good morning boys and girls and happy Sabbath. Welcome to your Mission Story Corner. I know that 2020 has been a challenging year for many of us, but God has seen us safely through. And I know that for 2021, once God is with us and he goes before us, we can face anything. Now this morning, our mission story comes to us all the way from Ukraine. And it's told about a little boy by the name of Nikita, who is 12 years old. Now, Ukraine has about 40 plus million people. It's known for its Orthodox churches, its forested mountains, 
it's really a picturesque country to see. However, today our story is entitled, How Old Let's Go? parents owned three Bibles, but they never read any of them. As a matter of fact, Nikita wasn't really interested in God. He heard about him, but he never thought about him. Until one day, he had some questions about life, and he decided to go to his mom, and he asked her, Mom, where did people come from? And before she could even answer that question, he asked, Mom, where did the world come from? And she interjected quickly before he could ask another question. Well, God created everything. And he asked, well, why? And she said, son, well, because he wanted to be happy. So Nikita thought for himself, God created people so that he could be happy? That didn't make sense to him. God created me so that he could be happy? Hmm, he didn't understand that. Nikita had more questions. Why would God create anybody just to be happy? Then he remembered the three Bibles. One was big and gray. There was a medium-sized Bible as well. And then there was a small green and yellow Bible, just his size. He decided that he was going to read the Bible. Now Nikita opened up the Bible that he had found and saw that there was a wrapper. Underneath the wrapper, he read these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you know where that is taken from? Yes, you are correct. Genesis 1, 1. Now, finally, he thought, now I can find out everything I want to know about God. Now I would know why God created people. So he was so fascinated about the creation story that he actually read three chapters at once. And he realized that mother had been wrong. God did not create the world or the people so that he could be happy. He created the people because he loved them and he created the world so that they could enjoy it. He went to his mother and told her what he had found out. And she was fascinated as well to realize that at the age of seven, he was interested in reading the Bible. This morning, Nikita remembered the Bible and he read the Bible every day. Sometimes he would read three chapters a day, one in the morning, one afternoon, and one at night. Nikita loved reading the Bible, but he had many questions and the answers was not coming to him as quickly as he would like. One day he asked his mom, Mom, how old is God? After pondering for a little while, mom said, I don't know. Now Nikita remembered there was a church not too far from where he lived. So he decided to go to the church and ask them, how old is God? But even them didn't know the answer to the question. But he still enjoyed going to the church and so he visited, visited the church every week. And at the age of 10, Mommy decided that she too would go to church with him. She loved listening to Nikita read the Bible and explaining the things that he had read. Then, Mommy had a question for Nikita. Seeing that you like reading the Bible so much and have so many questions about God, wouldn't you like to go to a school where they teach the Bible and about God? Of course, Nikita was happy about that idea and he said yes. Eventually, his mom sent him to an adventist school where they taught him a whole lot about God. One day, a teacher told him in Revelations 4, 8, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Nikita had gotten the answer he wanted. God was never born and God will never die. Nikita is 12 years old and he continues to read the Bible three times a day, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. This quarter, 13 Sabbath offering will go towards helping Nikita's school construct a classroom 
where they can meet and discuss more about Jesus. Until next time. Now I understand that God is real. Hi, good morning everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome once again to another craft time. This morning we're here in our sister island Tobago and this is Mount Irvin Beach. So today we'll be doing some paperweights and we're here to get one of our main craft items and that's rocks or stones if you want to call it stones. So I would have been walking around see my footprints and I finally found some stones that I could use. Now we really want to get some smooth smooth stones right so okay so this one here is a good one right smooth because we're gonna be painting some rocks and using them as paper weights all right so I'm gonna collect a few more Okay everyone, so this morning we'll be doing paperweights and we'll be making paperweights with the rocks we collected. It must be washed and cleaned, right? We would need paper or anything to protect our surface when we paint. A cup of water, Q-tips, paint brushes, and of course our paint. Acrylic paint lasts the longest, so instead of poster paint, we use an acrylic paint, right? Okay, so first we'll start with priming our rock. We're gonna just use white acrylic paint, right? So I have my paint and I have my water. Um, so we just want to basically give it a really nice coat. With the white paint um, I mean if you want to purchase priming paint that's fine but it's not necessary this paint here this coat of white paint is just to fill any holes um, anything that might initially ab um, be absorbed by the rock so that when you actually do your design or pattern, you will have less painting to do, right? So you just to decide that you want to paint. If you want to do the whole rock, that's fine as well. Um, but for this particular one, we'll be doing, we'll be just priming by painting the upper part or the top part of the rock. All right, and every time we use a color, um, we have our cup of water so you know you're gonna clean your brush all right so let's let's leave our rock to dry so we're gonna start with the ladybug now if you can't draw you could probably ask your parents to help you um, if you can't use a brush to do what I'm doing you could just take a pen and you know put some sort of guidelines you know like this so that you know well you know what you'll be painting right so I will just so I didn't really pen just now but I, I want to show you what I, I would have done with all the pen which would have been just to take some black paint and draw that line right okay so this part of this is the face of our ladybug so we're gonna paint that in black and now we're gonna go to our red
Okay, so our ladybug has dried and now well just to let you all know I would have done two coats for each color so now we're going to use our q-tip to make the little black dots on our ladybug alright so I like the q-tip because it gives you that wrong shape without you having to you know, if you want to make it bigger, you just shift it around. And you can use the two sides as well. So I'm going to use the other side to do the white for the eyes of the little bob. Side to let it dry so I want to move on to the next one so because of the shape of this rock I decided to do a penguin um, on the penguin I would have drawn just the inner shape of the penguin um, to do that what I did was took a pen and uh, you could start by doing half of a heart so like the top part of the half and then rounding it and making a peak on the end and this peak will represent the, the hand or the wing sorry of the penguin then we have an upside down triangle for the nose two circles for the eyes and just two small little half a circles at the bottom for the feet right so now we're gonna paint it Right, so we're gonna leave our penguin to dry and we'll give it a second coat after um, we want to move on to our flat stone and on this one we're just gonna be doing a three a tree with flowers so we use our smaller brush you're going to be taking the black and we're just going to be doing some lines to represent like branches you can be creative with your line and now once again we're going to use our q-tip and we're going to use different colors to do flowers on our branches. Alright, so we're just going to... now we're 
we're gonna use the other side of the kitchen and we're gonna just do a different color on the center of the flower. So very easily we would have done a tree of flowers. Alright, so we can put this aside and we have to let it dry. We'll do two coats of everything and then you'll see the finished product. So this is our final product everyone. Um, they are paperweights so you can just use it to hold down paper but it's a really pretty way of you know keeping the paper from moving. Alright so I hope that just like how these paperweights are grounded, I hope that we all become and stay grounded in Jesus Christ. That's all for now. Bye! Happy Sabbath boys and girls. Today we are going to learn about the mosquito. <laughs> all know that they are one of the most annoying animals but today we are going to do something new there are over 3,000 different species of a mosquito when you look at a mosquito they are fly as harmless as a fly they are not big or strong and don't have sharp teeth or razor like claws they simply with wings or army but Kala I learned from auntie that they are the world's deadliest animals you may have thought it was the lion, tiger, bear, or sharks. Yes, I thought it was one of the animals you mentioned above. But why did you say the mosquito? Mosquitoes can spread harmful diseases to humans like malaria, dengue, and yellow fever. A specific species of mosquitoes can also give you brain infection. Mosquitoes are mostly responsible for around 1 million deaths year in the world. Guys, so it's like that. It too appears harmless, like telling mommy and daddy a little white lie, stealing a pencil or not willing to shake. So it appears harmless on the outside, just like mosquitoes, but deadly on the inside. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 22. Sin is like mosquitoes when it too pricks our body. When we commit sin, it affects our body. For example, not eating healthy food can give you a health disease like cancer and diabetes. We need to save God ourselves from sin and mosquitoes. The Bible said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalms 119.11 Proverbs 1 verses 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Hi boys and girls, I have a story for you. And you have to remember to be careful with the friends you keep. David wanted to join this group. He wanted to be with the guys. And he just wouldn't let up. And they decided, you know what he will do? We will give him a test. There was this old house, and the house looked haunted. And they told him, you have to spend a night in this house. And he said, in that house? But that's an old house. Nobody goes in there. If you want to be our friend, you will go into that house. So he decided to do it. Now, this was the plan. They would, he would spend the night in the house, they would give him a gun just in case any wild animal or any anything came up and to frighten him. He had a gun. So they gave him the gun and it was also full moon. And he went into the house very early in the evening so he would look for a place where he can, you know, spend the night. He would stay in that corner until morning. So he searched the house and he found a place. Now, the friends went with him, make sure he was all right. They left and he stayed in the house. And during the night, you know when you're in a strange place, you don't sleep well. 
he like he heard a noise and when he woke up he saw an eye looking at him and he was scared he didn't know what to do he crouched himself smaller into the corner and then the eye was still there looking at him and he was so scared he remembered the gun and he took the gun and he shut at the eye and he made a loud noise only to realize that the moonlight was shining on his foot and what he was seeing was the glare of his toe from the moonlight and he realized that he shot himself and he was in pain and then the friends had to come now and take him to the hospital so we have to remember when sinners entice us do not consent to it.